Welcome to Has Discusses. We are joined by CJ Supreme, a Delaware artist. That is right. You're from Delaware because I found you from the Delaware rap page. I'm uh, I'm from Scranton, Pennsylvania. I actually just moved here to Delaware last year. So you live in Delaware. You're a Delaware artist. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I'm calling you that, but I mean, I don't know. Are you repping Scranton? Like, do you care about Scranton or no? Yeah, no, that's like where I, I got like at least my first like following and shit. That's where I live most of my life. But I mean, I guess if I'm down here, I'm a Delaware artist. You feel me? You're both. Let's just say that. But, yeah. Um, yes. Yeah. Yeah, so um, you're still you're figuring out the logistics of that one. <laughs> Well, I mean, I obviously want to go into some hardships that you've been talking about, but before then, let's talk about mm-hmm. a recent W, okay, in the books. That is working with Nick Mira. Oh, yeah. So, how how did that happen? Because that's, you know, Nick Mira, if the audience is not familiar, he's worked on Lucid Dreams and All Girls Are the Same and Fuck Love and Ransom, any track that has plagued your speaker. Okay. Yeah, um actually I found him way like when he was like a lot of people don't know he was a YouTube producer before like he was making like type beats wow. um on YouTube way before he even like blew up and I found him from looking up type beats so I had all those old beats that he since deleted so I was just like you know and I got the lease on them so I was like bah. let's bring this let's bring this bad boy out. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. I feel like, like, and, uh, you gotta have, like, that's dope, though, because, like, a lot of people have started off doing that, like, uh, and gone successful. Who is another example of that? Cash Money AP. Mm-hmm. Uh, and he still does that shit. And stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, to this day, yeah. And as a producer myself, um, I've gotten recommendations to lot- watch Nick Mira stream. His, uh, he's very... Or whatever he does, some insightful shit about melodies and all that. Yeah. So it seems like you gotta, in order to figure out about Nick Mirror really early on, you gotta have a lot of knowledge about the underground as well as the mainstream. Let's talk about a certain figure who you've told me has helped you out, and that would be mm-hmm. Nyora. Oh, Nora. Yeah, yeah, Nora. Um, you spelled it yeah, Nyora my- in the messages. Yeah, he spills it with the why. He um the reason he has the why is like to never stop asking why, which I asked him what that means. He was like, What do you think it means? And I was like, dude, well, I don't I don't know. You're the one who put it in. Yeah. Nah, Nora's Nora's my man's though. That's um he's my manager. I signed to him in July of last year, but only announced it in August. Um, but no, that's that's my man. So shout out Nora. I know he's gonna be watching this, but um, no, Nora's Nora's great. Nora's my manager. He's helped me so much, um, with like promoting and you know getting my music out there, like my marketing schedule, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you know, Nora's amazing. Yeah. So it's my man's for real. So the thing about the last track, which I just did a, the video for it because you recommend I do a reaction video to it. I did yeah. that, and um, and then I saw I was like. And it just came out, and the way you built up hype for that, like, I'm going to keep it stacked. I was, like, really waiting for that track because I was, like, looking at the snippets and all of that shit. So, like, um, besides, I'm talking about the Nick Mirror track, like, what um, other projects or singles are you proud of uh, working on recently? Ooh. Oh, man. Oh. That you would recommend to someone who has not heard them? Dude, honestly, that is a great question. I wish people would ask a question like that. Like, I've been waiting for it. So, some of my best tracks that I would recommend for somebody who's first listening to my music would probably be, because obviously, right off the bat, nobody's going to want to hear that, like, sad boy, you know, because they're going to be like, dude, this is depressing. So, I would say Geeked Up with Jax, um, Dirty Diana, and... Uh, Probably hands down now. For sure. Uh, for sure, for sure. So talk about Nora's uh, experience with the, uh, you know, people in the game. Oh, Nora. Yeah, so um, anyone who knows, like, Nora or is, like, a, a cult, like, X fan or anything like that knows, like, Nora, um, he, uh, he was, like, very involved with that scene very early. Um. Um, I wasn't there, so I don't know a whole lot about it, but he ha- he was like 
early tracks with like X Ski. You go into a SoundCloud, go all the way back like five, six years ago. They have songs together, um, some of X's first songs and such. You know, so they have like that. Um, you know that uh, man, what's the word? That connection. Um, he ha- you know he has songs with uh, Global Dan, who is so like you're talking about the early was- SoundCloud florida days the floor like he's originally from florida yeah pretty much like that like i wouldn't say like space ghost perp but like that this early oh my god like i love space ghost perp though like i fucking love his sound and a lot of what um and i love the way he influenced the underground i talk about this shit a lot is the way space ghost perp influenced the underground you know schema posse passion Mm -hmm. players um what other groups or people such all our water boys yeah um denzel curry influence right like, there i feel like um space Ghost perp was really he was like really the first one to start using like distorted 808s and shit yeah I, i'd say i'd say so but i feel like um at least to popularize it it's main it's not just that but he also did a lot of like he brought back that memphis horror core which mm-hmm. was the foundation for everything you listen to now. Like, if you yeah. go back and listen to Gangsta Pat, like, okay, let's go, let's just go through a little rabbit hole. No Bystanders by Travis Scott has the whole, fuck the club up, fuck the club up. What's that come from? Yeah. Three Six Mafia, okay? Tear mm-hmm. the club up. What's that come from? Gangsta Pat. If you yeah. listen to a lot of old Gangsta Pat, then it all sounds like new shit. And all those hi hats and shit, and DJ Zerk, man, and I feel like he was the space was purpose trying to say like, hey, you gotta remember the roots. You can't just like. There's a lot of new shit that's like a like. I feel like everybody. That's when the pot. He did the complete opposite of what everybody was doing at the time in 2010 and shit. But I feel like I wish. Ace he what he was got bigger than ASAP Mob and Odd Future. Are you a fan of Odd Future and ASAP Mob, or do you who do you think? Okay, this is a good question. Who that hasn't blown up do you think should have blown up? Like anyone or anyone. like somebody that anybody. dude Jax. He's helped me with all my music, but like if you went into his music, you would understand like what I mean. Like his production level, his experimentation. His experimentation is on like the level of like some like oh man, I wouldn't even say like Travis Scott, but like it's I don't even know how to explain it, but that's why I think he should blow up because it's something that I haven't necessarily heard anyone else do other than him, you know, and he has such a distinct sound to him. And that's someone you work with a, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. So um, before you ever thought of a microphone being in front of you with you preaching into it, mm. what did you care about when it came to music? If the, even if you did care about it, but I assume you had to build yourself up to be educated about a bunch of people you fuck with. Yeah. So like, are you mean, do you mean like what I wanted to do before music or music wise? What were you interested in? Oh, um, experimentation. I just liked creating sounds. Um, I want to create something that could be nostalgic. Like, I love that feeling of nostalgia. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody does, but, like, that nice nostalgia. So, like, I was like, I want to make something that I can experiment with to either pave, like, a road. Because when I was younger, I used to listen to a lot of, like, older artists like um, Jimi Hendrix, Eric Clapton, like, the blues or, like, the uh, shit like that. Yes. Do you like Doors? The Doors? Yeah, The Doors. Fuck Um. And then, like, seeing how, like, Jimi Hendrix paved the way for, like, that acid rap, Eric Clapton, uh, the Yardbirds and shit, they all paved the way for, like, blues, um, blues rock, or not acid rap, why I say acid rap, acid rock, um, blues rock, um, and then The Doors, how, like, even when they did that shit with Skrillex back in, like, 2010, and seeing how this old, like, rock band and some dubstep artists made some shit together. I was like, that's crazy. I do like, why is nobody else like doing this? Why does everybody follow a blueprint and do the same thing over and over and over again? Like it's, you know, I know if you, you mean do by the blueprint. If, I could go on a million m- tangents about blueprints of people mm-hmm. like that fucking do that. And the, the drill shit pisses me off. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. 
I hate drill music. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, it's funny. I think the only reason I like drill music is because it's always like nobody makes really interesting drill music besides I can name like five people that I really enjoy. And that's uh, Polo Perks, uh, Sleepy Hollow, 22 G's, um, Fabio, mm-hmm. Foreign Kind of, and Pop Smoke. But other than that, I don't like uh, New York New York drill because everybody takes the drill uh, beats and they're like, Oh, and then and they get somebody they're like oh check out this italian rapping on a drill beat like they they use it as some sort of weird like they they they, they just make it so like it's so like weird they think they're doing like some new style but it's just being run in the ground and cj that whoopty shit that annoys me and the 90 year, did you see the video with the 90 year olds doing drill like the old oh movie? i did i yeah, did dude, that's like that's funny to me because it realizes how uh because that makes me like realize like I gotta keep take I gotta stop taking this shit seriously and like people would just be doing shit for fun. Yeah, I mean that kind of reminds me of like that SoundCloud rap that came out in like 2016, 2017. Like Low Pump, like dude was just doing it for fun, very clearly, you know. And like a lot of people were taking it super seriously, and it's like dude's just like some sixteen year old off a of Percocet having fun, you know, like. Yeah, I get what you mean. I mean, if you were to look at it from like. Uh, comparing it to some like conscious rap like j cole or kendrick lamar it'd be like this kid's a fucking joke but like dude was really just having fun with it you know he was making like rage music yeah yeah for sure and um what what genres are you kind of annoyed by that you want to speak on if you have if you are feel that way i don't think i really have any genres that i'm annoyed well mm. Man, the only con- the only kind of genre I can't stand, like obviously, I don't know about you, but I hate country music. I'm pretty sure like everybody yeah. doesn't like. There's like one country artist that I can stand. That's like George Strait, but like everyone else, I I don't like any. I don't else. like country rap either. That's what I was gonna get to. Is like that country rap is like. When it's like funny shit, like Old Town Road or like a farmer. That was a by gimmick Tracy. though. Like it was like that. Ex- that made him blow up. But it, you could tell like it was just like a gimmick. Like he was like, "I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna." You know what I mean? Like he was kind of. He was probably having fun. Yeah. And, we, and then it ended up blowing up and shit. Exactly. But like when people like when people who take it seriously, it's just like, oh my gosh, this is why this doesn't match. It's just it's terrible. That's and, the and only the people that do the TikToks. I love complaining. I don't give a shit. So if, if, <laughs> if you are listening to this and you don't like watching people complain, I don't fucking care, bro. Like, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not, no. for, I'm not fucking Gary V. Okay. Like I, I'm able to complain. Like I, I'm not trying to be all positive and shit. The world needs negativity anyways. Cause it gets you out of tough spots. Mm-hmm. Or yeah. it makes you actually analyze and have a deep, you know, out of body experience. Like let's go into that. Um, what moments of your life have you ever had like an out of body experience and realized what the fuck am I doing here, bro? Uh, when I was homeless. When you were ho- you were homeless, like uh, going to that. If you like, I was I was in the um, I was staying with my friend Python. Um, he his real name's Chris, but he raps under the name Python. Um, that kid's been my brother for like the longest time. We met at our first job, which was like some grocery store job, and it was terrible. We met over some dude. Like we had a lot of crackheads. Um, the town that I'm from is like number one in the entire country for heroin. So we have a lot of crackheads that would just come in and be completely fucking stupid. And one time there's a guy playing with gravy, like a, like a glass jar of gravy. And he just threw it on the ground. We had to clean it up and we're just cleaning it up. And then we start talking about music, but my out of body experience was I was, um, living with him pretty much for like a good portion when I was homeless and I was at his house, we set up the studio and we're recording. And then I, it just hit me. I'm like, you know, I have these songs. But what the fuck am I doing? Like, you know, like I can't I can't be homeless forever. You know, I can't base my future off a bet of if I'm going to blow up or not, because I didn't end up getting signed until I moved to Delaware. And it was like, yeah. it was I don't know, it was a it was a tough spot. And it was I don't know, it was rough. But that was like my first moment where I was sitting there. And it was just like, I saw my entire life up to that point, And I was like, whoa, what am I doing? Like, what is we doing? Everybody needs that. Everybody needs that. That, um, let me think about it. what was that for me? 
that was that for me and i'm not trying to equate myself i was not fucking homeless i'm not trying to equate myself to your scenario that is a scenario way worse than me okay <laughs> right but i feel like a lot of people had this is when the pandemic happened they were kind of like you know what am i doing should i be working hard at something i'm not doing and I feel like that's why the pandemic is going to breed a lot of hard workers, similar to the Great Depression. Yeah. Even though it's like, I'm fucking be honest, like, I, I, I don't like, it, it, yes, it killed people, but it's like, it's, I don't, it should be taken serious, but not as serious as people are taking it. I, I'm able to speak my fucking opinion, freedom of speech, mm-hmm. YouTube. I will fucking, you know, I, I, I know people. Uh, I'll burn down the company if you remove my <laughs> channel. <laughs> or it, let's say if that if I if I let's ha, let's say if I my channel gets taken down though patreon.com slash Mike Media Inc three dollars a month okay anyways um <laughs> gotta plug the Patreon <laughs> yeah yeah but yeah like like uh, I love those dark moments in people's lives everybody needs them and they like you either, I love people gotta like have uh, a lot of people aren't aware of themselves or what they say have you ever had to remove a toxic person from your life and that like after then it's like uphill yes too many times you want to go into that without mentioning names oh my gosh this kind of like led to me being homeless pretty much i was like with this girl and she was just i mean i'm I'm not gonna sit here and be like i did all good like i was the best thing to ever happen for her because i'm gonna keep it a buck 50 when i started dating her it was for the worst reason possible. I just wanted to get over somebody else, which did not fucking work because as soon as we broke up, I was like, damn, like, yeah, this did not work. But um, while we were dating, I pretty much like we was just toxic towards each other. And I, I was supposed to go to Florida for some other shit um, not related to Nora. I did know Nora then, though. But like unrelated to Nora, I was supposed to go and I ended up staying back in Pennsylvania just to like, you know, be there for her and shit. Ah. And like, oh man, she was supportive of the music, but like she just, I don't know, she took a lot of her frustrations out on me and it ended up damaging my mental health. And then while I was homeless, she kind of went and did things with a bunch of people at the same time. Uh, <laughs> and um choo choo oh god (laughs) yeah so as soon as i let her go dude like it was uphill 100 percent. like i got signed a month later uh i started making bank i was focusing on my work um i didn't really have any attachments and i was just like i'm i'm free i'm free i can do this and ghost town and ghost town started playing by kanye (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> dude i thought i want to music i want to direct the musical of your life and then like you know i think ghost towns run away or run away sure yeah that's right. another oh man that's um you know that's bad but that's great you know what i mean yeah that's that um, was just one instance though there was um man there's just like and it all revolves around women for some reason maybe that's why most of my music is about heartbreak and shit but like just the not on any misogynistic shit but like women are like the plague of my life like yeah. not not even on some misogynistic like all women are bad but like all my bad experiences have been with women now i'm not gonna let that form my opinion of girl all women are bad but i'm just saying you know yeah yeah i know what you mean 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 um and i'm with you there um you know after relationship end i started taking a lot like i you know it's been uphill since some shit but i still got a long ways to go and i always am consistently humbling myself and saying like hey we've done a lot but we haven't done that much man you know what I mean? And that's everybody has to do that where they have to like, you know, analyze, psychoanalyze. We're like, hey, I've done some stuff, but I got to do more. Or maybe sometimes I need to take a break. Maybe I need to take a nap. Maybe I need to take a couple naps in a couple days in order to prepare myself for like an event afterwards or leading up to something. Because um, what self-development practices have you ever gotten into doing this could be meditation this could be dieting 
what has that been in your life? Mm, well, making music was like the first one I ever did because I started making music when I was like a kid battling like depression anxiety from like you know just normal bullying in like middle school high school um you know home home issues uh issues with friends just like and i took that out in my music i was making like metal music at the time i was making like crunk core when that was a thing for like myspace uvu age because i'm that old You're, no you were on MySpace. I was on MySpace. Actually, I think I tried to log into my account recently, but it's not there anymore. At least I don't think it is. If but like, if they, you know, Drake, that's how Drake blew up. He was on MySpace. For real? I didn't even know that's how Drake blew up. I mean, you want to know how Drake blew up? Hmm. Well, besides, like, fucking best I ever had. But that's a fucking banger. I love Drake. I have a Drake cardboard cutout. I don't give a fuck. Love Drake. All his Bad. new shit's good, too. Anyways, um. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Valentine's Day has it, you know what I'm saying? Like, anyways, I'd be hating. so he was on MySpace and he would like, sh- he had like probably only like 10,000 followers or some shit. And he would like share, like, he's, he'd always share his music and shit. And then, um, he did a song. So he, he, how do I say this? So he was, his father was from Memphis. So his father mm-hmm. was from Memphis and, had a lot of ties in the music industry and shit like that. And his, uh, he would always call on the phone and shit with like some guy at his dad's prison because his dad was locked up for like drugs or some shit. Drake's dad, and um, he would like freestyle on the phone and shit. And then he so like he had a lot of ties in the south. So then he met uh, DJ Smalls, and DJ Smalls was like this big DJ, and hosted a bunch of hosted Drake's first mixtape, Room for Improvement. This mix I know that one. Yeah, I know that one. That mixtape won a lot of places, and it had like a feature from Lupe, Lupe Fiasco. You know what I'm saying? And Thr- Trey Songs was on it. Nicholas yeah. F. Nicholas F. has collaborated with uh, Lil Ugly Mane or Sean Kemp or however you know stuff like. I love fucking love Lil Ugly Mane. Anyways, um, brings that funk, but he also does some more like chill shit. But um, he he does everything. I fucking love Lil Ugly Mane. Anyways, um. Yeah, so he had that, like, DJ ties where he'd go to a bunch of parties and shit, and then he paid $10,000 for a Trey Songs feature, and he did Replacement Girl, and then he did, um, and then, uh, he met Forty, who was his engineer, he wasn't originally his producer, and then on MySpace, Jay Prince, Jay Prince's son, or Jaws Prince, something fucking, the owner of Rap-A-Lot Records, the Ghetto Boys label and shit, uh, he found Drake and he was like, Drake, I'm going to blow you up. And Drake was like, yeah, whatever. Drake's getting his haircut. And then, well, actually the guy who found his music showed his music to Lil Wayne. And he was and then Lil Wayne was like, turn this shit off. I don't fucking like this shit. And then he shows it to him again, like a couple of days later. And then he's like, damn, this is good. And then he tells the guy who's showing him the music to call Drake. Drake's getting a haircut. And then he, Lil Wayne fucking calls him while he's getting a haircut and then flies him out to Houston and shit that scenario does not happen to a lot of people yeah i didn't even know that myspace had anything to do with it i just remember the room for improvement mixtape and all that stuff but i didn't but i didn't even know myspace was what involved you, in the picture that's what we got to talk about though like when were you using myspace uh what like year the, like the end of it like towards its death like 2010 yeah like around there because my cousin had it my cousin was on MySpace in the early stages of SoundCloud when SoundCloud first started. Like before there was any SoundCloud rappers, my cousin was on it doing like dubstep, like dead mouse type shit. And I was like, this is cool. I want to do this. This is new. I like experimentation. This sounds like hype. I want to let my rage out. I'm going to do this. So I was very like into like Skrillex and stuff like that because i found skrillex from his band prior from first to last which i was like in love with as a kid um this some like emo core band and uh basically that's how i got involved in music and there was like some um terrible terrible online thing that i used to use that was basically just like a loop thing and you would press a button it play the loop and then you press another button and it'll play like a percussion loop etc yeah and i'd use um Oh, what's it called? I like put like my iPod um, back before they even had the cameras and it was just audio. And I put it up to my computer speaker and I'd record it and then post it onto oh, SoundCloud. God. Like it was it was bad. But like this is like 2010. So I'm talking like 11 years ago. 
Um, oh yeah, like um, you need to program yourself. You need to have an unhealthily obsessive personality that is uh unhealthy. Uh, you you really think that um one who builds a successful company? Do you think that fucking Steve Jobs was eating healthy? And, like, having a healthy sleep schedule when he was fucking making his first computer or whatever the fuck Steve Jobs did. Do you really think he had a healthy existence? Do you think, like, like I'm saying, you got, do you gotta, do you gotta, have you ever acknowledged that, like, not everything is, like, a healthy existence and sometimes you gotta be, like, feverishly obsessed with stuff in order yeah. to be successful? Mm-hmm. Yeah, a lot in the, um, I guess in the, I wouldn't say beginning rap stages, but, like, when I first started on my first album my first album project soul eater like two years ago um as cj supreme i destroyed my sleep schedule my sleep schedule still has not been the same and even worsened with this last project because i was i was staying up like i i wake up 6 30 go to school come home from school go to work come home from work at like eight and then till like one o'clock in the morning i'd be um one or two like one o'clock or two in the morning i'd be working on music and then i go to sleep sleep for like five hours wake up do it all again the next day and i did that for like an entire year until i dropped that album and now looking back at it i'm like losing all that sleep was definitely worth it but not worth it because a the album's production quality for how much i was putting into it definitely could have been better but it's like a bittersweet kind of thing because it also showed how i grew and it was definitely a start because one of the songs on the album um got me uh an award nomination it got me in magazines it was the one that caught Nora's attention it got a music video it got it was on the radio so it was like needed but you know well what award show what's up what award show uh it was the steamtown music awards that's dope damn how'd you get was that like a management thing got this shut up or was it like it was just like cult fan base like yeah because bro like i was looking at the like the the view the streams and i was like that just came out like, that's good you know what i'm saying like mm-hmm. then i was like damn like like how'd you build that cult fan base and you say that that's more positive than like that is way more um having a small cult fan base not necessarily small f- cult fan bases can be big um do you say that would you say that uh cult fan bases are way better than just being that one big guy I think cult fan bases are a lot bigger because now I know that there's going to be people who are going to support me no matter what. And that's a guaranteed. This is going to sound so wrong, but at a, at a business perspective, that is a guaranteed income. Yes. You know, because they're going to be the ones buying your merch. That's how you, I'm going to survive. You know, if I be that one big guy who like, you know, I drop a song, it gets huge. The next time I drop a song, it might not get huge because I don't have these people who are constantly like, CJ, where's the music? You know, like I need something that's going to guarantee me security for the next day. Yes. So I'd advise any upcoming artists value a cult fan base and engage with your fans as opposed to fucking. I wouldn't the one big single, you know what I mean? Like, oh, my God, that is a figment of your imagination. Mm -hmm. Maybe you'll get like. And and a song that only has like a couple thousand streams is not a hit. Everybody uses the hit, the term hit, like so. They use it like you know how people say goat too much. Yeah. Oh my god, this that's the same way I feel about the word hit. Everybody uses that word too much. Like they're like, yo, this one's a hit, bro. Like, why don't you say, hey, instead of saying, yo, bro, that song's a hit, bro. It's gonna be a hit, bro. And why instead of saying that, why don't you say? I really enjoy the structure in that track. I think a lot of people could appreciate the hook. Mm-hmm. That's a better fucking way to talk about music. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to lie. The word go, I like over excessively use that. So do I. Just I. Use, so do I, bro. You know what I'm saying? I use the word go to describe somebody that I appreciate or for like sure, that sure. I think deserves a position of like, at least in where I'm at right now, like this is somebody who means a lot whether it means music or a friendship or something else like i'll be like yo you're the goat you know like i appreciate you but when it comes to hits oh my gosh i had my one my one song right is my biggest two date song got 
oh man, is that 16,000 now? I don't know. It's at like 16,000 streams. That is not a hit. That is my biggest song, but that is not a hit. Right. It's 16,000 streams, you, you the know? Streams. Yes. Yes. Right. But, you know, like that's not a hit and, and that's fine. Nobody, like, you don't really have to have a fucking, like, Oh my god! I was listening. I was, you know, you know when somebody just got, like uh, puts on a um, shuffle playlist and it just has a bunch of random hits uh, on it, like that. That just like they don't have a playlist and they're just like, all right, I'm gonna put on you know Pandora. Someone had that one song that first let me hop out the motherfucking Porsche. Remember oh that track? Oh my gosh! Like, do Dude, you, that's can you name soundtrack. another song by him than Nasty Freestyle? Hell no. Okay, exactly. That's that's it. Yeah, and I feel like it kind of sucks for people that have a one hit that also have like a really good fan base that nobody acknowledges like um what's that one song that chameleonaire did the riding dirty you know what i'm saying or some shit they dude i'm gonna be honest i don't even rem- remember who it was that did that i just remember the song yeah but that guy has like a lot of underground like not underground but like southern love you know what i'm saying and yeah. he was like around that time when like the southern rap scene was booming because in the 90s it was east coast west coast were the only mainstream shit little bit of the midwest little bit meaning really only eminem and bone thugs um you know in the 90s when it came to the midwest but i mean and it really as soon as the 2000s started the south really boomed in terms of uh rap music and stuff like that what scenes of music uh, geographically, are you a fan of? Uh, Florida. Yes, definitely Florida. Um, I mean, like <sighs> visit. Like, I don't, I don't even say like visiting Florida as a child. But I used to go to Florida as a child, and like, I don't know the scenery there and the music that they played there was just so interesting to me. And then when the SoundCloud scene started booming and seeing all these rappers coming out of SoundCloud and seeing how they were doing things, because I had never, other than in dubstep, I never really heard distortion on like bass or 808s. And it was so different because it wasn't like dubstep where it was like dubstep has the wobbles. This is like just a straight like 808 distorted as fuck. And these guys being like, you know, like yelling over them, either yelling or like, you know, just like having these like, I wouldn't even say lazy flows, but like they were so nonchalant with their flows where it wasn't as articulated as um, lyrical rap or rap that I had heard beforehand, you know, like that mainstream stuff. It was so underground and I, I don't know. I just loved it. There was something addicting about it. Yeah. And I'd say that um, a lot of people like, like it, 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 I tried telling a Juice World fan about Bones, <laughs> and they never know <laughs> not the Bones, dude. Bones is so influential, and nobody talks about it. Yeah, like oh my god, like I tried telling him, like bro, Bone, this guy Bones is way more influential than Juice World, and he was like. What? Like he could not comprehend it. What like, he say, like, dude? Bones oh surrender God. Dorothy. Oh my gosh! But you know what I mean, like, like the people who can't comprehend, like learning that yeah. their favorite artist is not, um, the creator of everything known to man. Like, like, like absolutely. Like, I know, I know. My next thing, because I love pissing people off, um. So like my next thing is I'm gonna tell someone, uh, who 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 should I tell others about? I'm gonna tell someone. Let me think of what pan base I gotta piss off. Um, Kid Leroy. Okay, I'm gonna do this to a Kid Leroy fan. I'm gonna be like, Hey, did you know that Lil B is more influential than Kid Leroy? And they're like, Who the fuck's Lil B? And I'm gonna be like, Dude, fuck you. He's the bass god. Like you're fake bass. Like I'm gonna I'm gonna so do that. Like, you, oh my god. That's that real music, man. <laughs> That's that real music, man. Dude, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna be honest though, ba- like Lil B, like a lot of people would say that he just kind of does that shit as a joke. He makes really good music. Like I'm gonna be honest, like I actually genuinely like a lot of his music. Like Six Kiss is one of the greatest like rap albums ever made. I, to I be mean, honest, I never really listened to Lil B. But you're aware of like yeah, of who he is. Yeah, that's of good though. Like um. But I would definitely recommend out of anything. I'll, I'll give you three little B recommendations, real quick. Um, 
Lil because I've been listening. I've been you know I've been talking with Lil B. You know what I'm saying? Recently mm-hmm. about some shit, about an interview, about doing music. Um, anyways, um, that will be Blue Flame. That's a real southern. Really, it's like a one of them gangs. What, what, what's the uh? Trapaholics, like that's literally a Trapaholics mixtape. Like literally, it's hosted by Trapaholics or whatever the fuck that is. Uh, Six Kiss and Black Ken. That's uh what I definitely recommend. But Six Kiss, if you want to like learn about cloud rap and like the origins of cloud rap, that's what you got to go into because it's real spacey. Um, sounds a lot like nothing was the same. Drake. I'm not saying Drake stole that style, but every a lot of people were doing cloud rap at the time. It's like a wave. It's like this shit now, the melodic trap shit. You know what yeah. I mean? Rockstar trap shit. It's like that. That's what cloud rap was in like 2010. And I'm pretty yeah. sure you're aware of that. So I definitely yeah. recommend doing Six Kiss. But um, who's an artist that you haven't gotten into that you really got to get into? Man, I'm going to be honest. Melly. I have not. Like, I, I know Melly. I know a couple of his songs, but I haven't gotten into him like that. Melly. Um... I know here in Delaware, everybody down here is into Young Boy, but where I'm from, nobody likes Young Boy. Like you will get made fun of if you listen to Young Boy. So I just never. I don't know. I know I, people that like like I like Young Boy, but I love making fun of him. Like, he has some songs that I know, right? But like, I just never got into him, and it wasn't on the like hateful, like Young Boy. Oh my! But it was just like I just where I'm from, nobody liked him, so it wasn't like I was put onto him. Yeah, like I um I can definitely appreciate him, but I, what I always said about Young Boy is that even though right now he is the face of Louisiana and Louisiana rap, mm. I would have much rather preferred it if Lil Snoop was the face of Louisiana rap. You know the Meek Mill yeah. prodigy, um, mm. affiliated, like he was a real like Meek Mill recruited him, but he sadly passed away. But I feel like I feel like Lil Snoop. If he was the face of Louisiana, that would have been so much better in my opinion because obviously I prefer Lil Snoop's music as much more, way much more. Like I see a lot of people that blow up, and I'm like, damn, I wish this person had like could have been way more influential. Like when they die, like Speaker Knockers. Oh my yes, god, I love, speaker. love Speaker Knockers. Yeah, it's the Speaker Knockers. Yeah, and um, what pissed me off about Speaker Knockers, not really pissing me off. Is Lil Lil Pump did a cover of Lonely? I saw that. that I shit, saw that. I, I I can't. I I I. If he's if someone like if I take that, another perk, I'm a OD. I feel like that's just insulting speaker knocker. Yeah, because... honestly, like I I was like, Lil Pump, I might have to um step in the ring with you. <laughs> you know, Lil like Pump, I, 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 you're, you're disrespecting my. Mi- no, I don't give a fuck. I don't know about these people. Like, but um. But like yeah, like he's um people yeah, you know, people got like I hear in in Lil TJ, you know who I hear? I hear speaker knockers and A Boogie. Of course. Of course. While I fuck with him, it's like no difference. Obvious bro. speaker knockers, you know. Influence. Even in Juice World. Even in Juice World, you can hear the speaker knockers. Well, I love Juice World and I appreciate his music. And it's gotten me through tough times. Um um uh, when I first heard him, when I first heard Lucid Dreams, I um, I thought I was listening to PMB Rock. Really? Yeah, that's a very unpopular opinion, but I've said it before, and I'm not afraid to say it again. Fucking love him, but oh my god, he. Well, I love what he's done, and I love the way he's like, uh, the way he expresses expressed himself. His fan base is like is as as annoying as Lil Peeps, um. So Lil Peep. He, uh, if you go back on Lil Peep SoundCloud, Lil Peep commented on someone's uh, beat from like 2012, and was like, "Bro, this sucks." So what did it I be- saw that? And everybody just yeah, commented. Five thousand of his fans commented, "Bro, this sucks." So like, yeah. when, when people found Juice World's old Instagram, Juice World like takes a picture with a burger, and he's like, "This is a big burger." So then everybody comments, "This is a big burger," and there's like <laughs> 150 thousand comments. Of I'm not gonna lie, that shit funny though. Like it's funny in a scary way, where I'm like, dude, somebody took the time out of their 150 people took the time out of their day. Like this is um, people gotta realize that. And I mean, yeah, that's a funny thing to do, and it's funny to look at. But people gotta realize if you're doing shit like that, you're making your time less valuable, and those people's times are probably worth um five cents an hour. Anyways, yeah. Besides me insulting 100. 50,000 people 
What could you say about your music uh, that you have planned? What what could you speak on that you have planned when it comes to music that you can speak on? Because a lot of shit has to be disclosed. Oh, yeah. Uh, Yeah, everything's disclosed. No, I'm kidding. Uh, (laughs) um, I'm working on a project right now. Uh, It's like a follow-up because my last album was a concept album basically leading up to my life for the past year. And then everything that like this next project is basically my life from that point to now so it was about like you know getting out of that homeless situation getting over like toxic people um trying to better myself as a person from going down a dark path and now this album is about just being free um you know not like in a sense like being a more positive person and not giving a fuck you know like i gotta stop worrying about other people and worry about myself because in the end, are they making money for me? Are they eating for me? If I die, are they going to die? Was they, Were they born because I was born? No, I'm my own person. So I got to worry about myself. Obviously, like if you're down bad, like, oh, that's unfortunate. I'm sorry to hear that. But I can't be everybody's Superman. I got to be me, you know? Yep. So that's like half of like what the album's about. It's called Don't Look Back. Um, and hands down was the first single off of it excited to hear it and uh i'm enjoying your music recently and i'm definitely gonna listen to the album while i edit this or some shit and um your old album you know your old music is what i'm saying because i've only really heard a couple tracks from you you know what i mean so yeah, i'm gonna yeah, definitely go down that rabbit hole and links in the description to a soundcloud and um social media and shout out to you and thank you for joining the show thank and you. like comment subscribe goodbye